Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the 34th episode of Sector Spotlight. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I'm your host for today's show. I'm based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. If you're watching this show on the YouTube channel, please leave your comments in the box below. And of course, don't forget to like the video. Sector Spotlight airs live, pre-recorded, every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. For today, I want to go over the rotations that we saw last week in definitely sectors, maybe some asset classes. And I want to go and dig into some uh, questions that I received via the mailbag. So please stay tuned. I'm going to go to my desk and let's get started. The performance for asset classes last week was dominated by risk on assets. Real estate, a whopping 9.4%. The stock market, 5.4%. Our 60-40 balanced index benchmark, 3%. And if stocks go up 5, we must find government bonds down 1.4%. So this is the daily RRG and, and watch this rotation for the stock market. It actually went from weakening, curling up, back into leading and moving further to the right. So I think that we there is more and more evidence that what we thought was a short term rotation is now turning into a longer term rotation in favor of stocks. So if we update this to the weekly RRG, then stocks are still to the left and government bonds to the right. But you can you can see the opposite rotation of the tails. Um, with the daily moving back into leading, I think we have to uh, to be aware of this longer term rotation going on and accept that there is a pretty good possibility that that this low was it and that we're actually now starting to push against all time highs and potentially breaking it. Um, if I bring the stock market, I've loaded up SPY here on the right hand side. You can see that in terms of relative strength, there is still quite, quite a bit of um, upside movement to, to go before we can take out the peaks in, in relative strength that we saw over the last two years but we are we are well underway and the RRG lines as you can see here are rising steeply um, putting uh, a lot of power into this rotation for the stock market and the same goes if we do that for government bonds but then the other way around you see a, a pretty steep decline in the RRG lines and where I was assuming working with the assumption that this was going to be sort of a rising triangle it looks as if it has now turned into a top that resistance was not taken out the price is rolling over we broke this intermediate low so you know the upside for bonds is now getting more and more cap there is now more uh, overhead resistance between 28 and 28 25 for govt um, so far for asset classes, one that I want, one more that I wanted to show you is the once again um, disappointing rotation for commodities. It looked as if it was starting to improve, but again it rolled over and it's already back into the lagging quadrant. Let's quickly move on to uh, to the U.S. sectors. Do that on a daily basis and see what kind of sector rotation we had last week and you see that there is a uh, it, there's a very fast and rapid move to the right for a number of sectors where at least I had not expected it from a longer term perspective so you got industrials got financials got real estate got utilities all shooting to the right materials still going to the right at a little bit less momentum and we have technology um, moving into lagging now on the daily, we've got communication services weakening and we got healthcare already far into the weakening quadrant, picking up a little bit of momentum, but not much. And discretionary has just moved from leading into weakening. Um, 
if we do that on a longer term or on, on the weekly RRG, then we see the, um, the massive move for energy. And that is the, uh, the sector because we've got energy and we've got staples moving down. We've got here is still healthcare and technology are somewhat overlaid. And then we can see the improvement in financials and industrials that we just saw on the, um, on the daily RRG. The, the charts that I w quickly want to share with you is the one for energy because that is now going so rapid um, and, and still, but it is far on the left on the RRG. That's still not very strong in terms of relative strength. The price move is stellar. I mean, we, we doubled from 2250 to, to over 45. That is a massive, a massive rally. But if you look at the relative strength, that's still in a downtrend and we've got a lot of overhead resistance waiting. Um, so I am, I am still very, very cautious with the energy sector because the major relative trend is down. It's running into a lot of overhead resistance and there is a fairly big chance that this tail here will start to roll over and curl down. On the RS ratio, it's still the weakest sector. Still very cautious with financials and industrials. They're far to the right. The short term, the short term movement, undeniable, super strong, uh, maybe goes a little bit further. But on the weekly, I, I need to see more evidence for that. Healthcare and technology. Uh, these are the two that we need to discuss because they're losing a lot of relative strength, but they're pushing like technology is coming to almost all time high levels. And the same goes for healthcare. So despite the fact that a couple of other sectors are now running faster than healthcare and technology, I keep watching them because they are on the far right of the RS ratio scale, which is still strong. They're in weakening, but at that level, I'm going to assume that that is temporary and that they're going to curl back up. And I'm, I'm looking very, very closely at the price chart for both healthcare and technology to actually take out their all time highs. And that will very likely fuel the improvement of relative strength and bring that to new highs. And then we've got the leaders of the sectors back into place. Communication services on the weekly still in leading, getting a little bit of damage on the daily. Um, I'm going to stick to the to the daily to the weekly rotation to the longer term rotation, um, which gives me some sort of a bullish outlook for um, like discretionary consumer uh, communication services, healthcare, technology, and materials is coming very very close, and I want to leave it at this for the overview right now because I got a ton of uh, questions in the mailbag that I want to spend some time on. So here's a question from the mailbag. It actually comes from Michael. <clears throat> he writes to me, I noticed that you do not apply log scale to your charts. I'd appreciate knowing your rationale behind your thinking. Let me try to explain that. First of all, I think that the human brain is sort of wired linear. And that makes drawing a non-log chart um, more natural, more intuitive, probably. That's why we, we, we can draw trend lines on a non-log chart as, as straight lines, because that's what they are. They, you know, the, the, the um, unit size on the y-axis is always the same. So if you draw a straight line, that actually means that you got a straight acceleration of that line and that's I think it's wired in people's brains so when especially when I look at because I do look at log term chart um, log charts every now and then but let me finish this first 
So when you, when you look at charts that are not too long in time span, and especially the, the price difference between the high and the low that's visible on the chart, I prefer a non-logarithmic chart, so a linear chart, because that gives me the ability to draw trend channels, they are linear, and I think it's more like wired in our brains. So when do I use uh, log charts? I do that when I look at really long-term charts, um, especially when there is a huge difference in the, in the price range, so a, a big rise or a big fall. And the best example is probably the, the S&P or the Dow over a very long period of time where you see that if you take the history in the 60s and the 70s, and you look, if, you, if you look at a linear chart, that history in the 60s and the 70s is sort of unreadable because it's like little, little you know, swings that, that almost seem nothing. But when you zoom in, they're actually big swings. And if you do that on a, on a linear chart, you will not see how big those swings are because related to the swings of today, they were actually very minor. But in that day and age, they were huge. And using a log chart on a graph like that will actually help you to see that big percentage moves in the 60s, 70s, and well, the 80s already started to roll. But um, basically, to wrap up and answer this question, I, I prefer linear charts as long as I can use them and as long as I feel that they are useful. And I switch to log charts when linear charts are not useful anymore. So that very long period of time and those little scribbles in the 60s, 70s. Um, so I hope, I hope that that answers the question. It's, um, there's no hard rule. It's probably a matter of preference and how you want to visualize things and how you feel that you can actually represent the price change over that time in the best way possible. So thanks, Michael, for that question, and I hope that that's answered right now. Another question that came in is from Greg, Gregory, and he writes, Hi, Julius, I note that many sectors that have held up are relatively defensive. Are these likely to lead into recovery? What did the RRG look like coming out of similar historical periods? Uh, and mind you, this is an old question. This has been sitting in my mailbox uh, to be answered for a long time. This is actually uh, written on the 20th of March. Now, the reason I'm answering this question right now is because I actually wrote an article last week in the Chart Watchers newsletter in which I did something similar, not, not, not really about the sectors, but on sizes. The, uh, the article is titled, um, uh, it's a quote from John Murphy that says, smaller cap stocks tend to lead, uh, do better at bottoms. And that's something that I noticed last week, that small cap stocks actually started to pick up relative momentum and started to rotate in a positive way where pretty much since, since the bounce, the whole way up has been led by large cap stocks. And what I did is actually, I went back in history and the maximum period that we can scroll back on stock charts on an RRG is, is 10 years. So I went back, I scrolled back 10 years and I, I found, I identified three major, at least, in that, that size visible major lows. And I, I looked at how the size segment RRG, that's a drop down in the RRG. It says, um, if you go into the drop down on the RRG page, it, it says um, uh, size, sizes. And that will show you an RRG that shows you uh, mid, small, and large caps against um, the global, the total stock market. Now, what I found in these three occasions is that the rotational pattern after you came out of those major lows 
looks pretty much exact to the rotation that we currently see on that RRG. It has large caps coming out of leading into weakening, so they rolled over, they were in leading, they rolled over and they're now in weakening. And mid and small caps both moved out of lagging into improving and they are heading towards leading at a strong RRG heading. Coming back to the question with regard to the sectors, I encourage you to do the same as what I did and then apply it to your own way of thinking and the way you perceive things. Just load up 10 years worth of historical data, go into the RRG page, it says history, it's 10 years, you can do one, three, five, and 10 years, go back 10 years, find situations in the S&P 500 or any benchmark that you want to load up that you want to compare or want to study, isolate them and look at the, rotational, uh, at the rotation of the tails at that point in time. And do that for every situation in the S&P that you have identified and then see if you can find a common denominator or a common uh, rotation that fits the current picture and use that to your advantage knowing that what you've studied, it has happened in the past so many times and I'm going to expect that to happen again. So I hope that that answers Gregory's question. This question comes from Lee and it's actually the result of, I, I had a, uh, a little bit of emailing back and forth um, with Lee about RRGs, about how they're great for visual stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And then I uh, wanted to scan and I answered, we are unfortunately not able to scan yet. <clears throat> and then he, um, uh, he comes back with this question, he says, thanks for your response, Julius. I was wondering what your preferred setup would be if you were a fairly aggressive trader and were using the weekly RRG setting. Do you like to see stocks turning up and at 45 degree angle from lagging? Buy only stocks in the leading quadrant moving in the proper 45 degree angle or wait for stocks to get close to the RS ratio 100 line in improving heading towards leading or stocks coming from leading into weakening and turning back up again above the RS 100 momentum line. I know there are many ways to skin a cat, but was looking for some insights into more consistent winning setup scenarios. There, there is no, let me start to say that there is no right or wrong, and, and I, I didn't know the saying, there are many ways to skin a cat, but I love that saying, and I think it's, it's actually hitting the nail on the head, it's actually exactly what it is. There are, um, that's the same like there are many ways that lead to Rome, right? That's probably a European uh, way of saying it. But I've done, I, I continually do, do research, not like 24-7, but sometimes I sit down and I try to, you know, to, to put my thoughts and what I see into a little bit more quantitative way of looking at things. Uh, and I, I recently did that for another project that I'm working on. And I, that's why I picked, out, picked this question out of the mailbag to actually answer it right now because I can actually share a couple of the results that I got from that other work with you here on Sector Spotlight. And I, you know that I, always, that I already like, and it was more like a gut feeling. I, I did some work on it, but you know, there, was a, there was a combination of, of quant work and just gut feeling that stuff that heads into the um, strong RRG heading, so say between zero and 90 degrees, uh, Lee is, is talking about 45 degrees, that's smack in the middle. There are very few tails that, uh, that, that move at exactly 45% angle, uh, 40, 45 degree angle. So I've, I've narrowed that down to between zero and 90. And you could probably also make it a little bit narrow, go between 10 and 80 or 
20 and 70, but I think you, you should not narrow yourself down too much because it, it limits your opportunities. So I already knew, quote unquote, uh, that, uh, that a positive RRG heading was something that was good. And I actually stuck that into um, a piece of software. I've, I've got to um, branch out and use uh, another implementation of RRG that allows me to actually do these calculations and look for specific signals. And what I found there is that that RRG heading is actually is a pretty strong sign. And the good thing is, and I think what also makes RRG unique in a way that these, that turning into zero to 90 degree heading is something that is almost impossible to spot at a regular chart, even if you have like a normal relative strength chart in combination with a price chart. And even if you have the RRG lines on it, it is very difficult to, to spot when you see that turn, when you see that, that tail rotating into that zero to 90 degree area. So being able to quantify that is actually uh, very helpful. So the first study that I did is to look and we're, we're, I'm, I'm only using the uh, 11 S&P sector ETFs. So it's a very limited universe over roughly a 20 year time span, trying to find all the occurrences when a turn into zero to 90 degree happened, and then look at the result 13 weeks after that event. And 13 weeks is a quarter. So I'm using weekly charts they're, they're looking at longer term trends, and I'm looking for a meaningful, meaningful move, so like 13 weeks out, three months out. And you can actually see the results uh, on the screen. And what I then did is I actually took the same set of rules, but added the requirement that the rotation should have taken place or should take place inside the leading quadrant, uh, sorry, the, um, the weakening quadrant. So you know that we were always looking for these turns inside the weakening quadrant to move up because they are, um, that these are sectors that are already in an uptrend. They lost a little bit of momentum and they're now rotating back. So they're starting the second or the third lag of an, of an uptrend that's already in place. And I said, you can look at that on the screen. Well, you see that I'm at a very alternative desk right now. So I am going to move back to my real desk where I can share my screen with you and show you the results of those two studies. Give me a second and I'll be right back. Here I am back at my desk and we're going to talk about the two studies that I just mentioned. The, <clears throat> the screen that you now see is what's called a signal test. And what this does, it finds certain situations where specific conditions are met and then looks at the performance a specific period after the detection of that situation. Um, in this case, I am running this test on the 11 S&P sectors. The test runs for about 20 years from 2000 to 2020. It uses weekly data and we are comparing with the S&P 500. The specifics or the conditions that we're looking for here is for the tail of a sector to turn into the zero to 90 degree heading. So yesterday the heading was bigger than 90, 90 and smaller than 360. 
and today the heading is between 0 and 90. And when that happens, we are here. And then you see the 13 weeks after all these conditions are met. Now the, the green line is the mean return with the standard deviation. The yellow orange line is the mean return and the standard deviation of the benchmark, in this case the S&P 500. And the red line <coughs> is the difference, so the outperformance of our signals over the S&P 500. What you see is that it is a gradually rising line, which picks up in pretty much the second half of that 13 week period. But what I like is that we are almost 63% 60, of the time it is a gain. So the probability of gain is 63%. The mean is 1.2% and the median is almost 2.3. So the, the mean is the average as we know it. And the median is the middle of all uh, return observations. Um, what I really like is the fact that this curve here, this return curve, is skewed to the right, so the majority of the returns is above zero. That's actually what you want to see. This happened over the last 20 years roughly a thousand times. So a thousand times a sector tail made that turn and showed this type of return. I think this pretty much justifies looking for tails turning into the 0 to 90 de degree area. And mind you, this can happen anywhere on the RRG plot. It doesn't matter in which quadrant. It happens everywhere. <clears throat> now, the second thing that I did is narrow down these 1,024 results into the results that only happened inside the weakening quadrant. So. We're still looking for turns into the 0 to 90 degree heading, but now only in the weakening quadrant, so inside the weakening quadrant. And what you then see that the over a thousand results has now come down to 190, 190. So that specific set of conditions happened 190 times over this period. And you see that the results are significantly better. Um, again, the green is the, is the mean, is the average, and the red is the outperformance. So uh, especially that skew is now much further to the right. There, is, there are obviously much less observations, but you see that like 3.5% is no exception. And what's also very encouraging is that the probability of gain is now almost 70% with a, an average of 2.4 and a median of 3.1. So all in all, um, turning into 0 to 90 degrees is a good thing to watch anywhere on the RRG plot. And when that happens inside the weakening quadrant turning back up, that's uh, definitely interesting to watch. Please beware. Whenever you see something happening on the RRG, please always check the final results on the normal bar chart and run through your own specifics with regard to money management and your normal trade setups. But this is how RRG can help you when the tails of a sector turn into the zero to 90 degree area. Ladies and gentlemen, this was Sector Spotlight. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. And if you happen to watch this on the YouTube channel, please don't forget to like the video. We all like the likes. But also, if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I am trying to answer each and every comments, question, suggestion. I love the engagement. For now, stay safe, and I hope to see you back next week. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.